the most flamboyant politicians in the world, Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi is under attack on all sides. There have been revelations of wild parties at his Rome residence. There were 20 girls there. It was like a harem. And allegations of cavorting with prostitutes. He loves women. But amid the sex scandals, there are more sinister suggestions of corruption and involvement with the Mafia. I have no doubts that the Mafia had a 30-year association with Berlusconi's companies. Through it all, Berlusconi stays in power, popular among huge sections of society. Silvio Berlusconi is not just a politician. He's a rock star. In Italy, he's like the Beatles. So what is the secret of his success? Viva la Lombardia! Viva l'Italia! Sono non soltanto a mio giudizio il miglior presidente del Consiglio che si possa reperire oggi. Io ho verificato tutto quello che hanno fatto gli altri presidenti del Consiglio nella storia. Credo che non ci sia nessuno a cui io mi debba sentire inferiore. I'm returning to the country of my birth to understand how Silvio Berlusconi has stayed in power for so long and to see if he can survive. I haven't lived here for 25 years. Reading about him abroad, Berlusconi is regarded with curiosity and bemusement. It appears his life story is no ordinary tale, a drama full of dark mysteries, grand passions and comic moments. A uniquely Italian soap opera. The man known abroad keeps the German premier waiting. First, the leader of the free world is tanned, and who is shameless about his own cosmetic surgery and hair implants, and whose reactions, when challenged, can be very undiplomatic. When a German politician dared criticize Berlusconi, his response shocked the European Parliament. Signor Schulz, so che in Italia c'è un c'è un produttore che sta montando un film sui campi di concentramento nazisti. La suggerirò per il ruolo di Capò. Lei è perfetto. In 2009, blunders gave way to scandals. In the spring, his wife of 20 years, Veronica, announced she wanted a divorce, accusing him of consorting with young girls. And the year ended with him being assaulted in Milan. Berlusconi is almost halfway through his third term as Prime Minister, and his coalition enjoys a sizable majority. But a few days after I arrived, I realized there was another side to his story. This is Say No to Berlusconi Day. An estimated 200,000 people took to the streets of Rome. What struck me is how angry the protesters are. This is as much about personality as it is about policies. Cioè lui non mi piace, 
non mi piace la disonestà, non mi piace la non chiarezza, non mi piace il modo in cui lui tratta chi non la pensa come lui, in poche parole non è democratico. interesse non pensa a noi cittadini, ai giovani e ho paura del domani con Berlusconi. Ma è la gente, la gente che lo vota perché lo vota? Ah guarda, io vengo da una famiglia poverissima, mi chiedi, papà era pastore e mamma era contadino. I miei parenti, tutti i poveracci, votano tutti Berlusconi, non pensa che sono. Perché sono. Perché voti Berlusconi? Some here see Berlusconi's style as autocratic, evoking memories of fascism. He's in a coalition with one of the most far-right parties in Europe. Last year, they passed draconian anti-immigration laws. But more controversial is the apparent conflict of interest between Berlusconi's business affairs and his political power. Io sono qui semplicemente perché ritengo sbagliato il modo con cui si fa la politica in Italia, cioè attraverso la televisione controllata. Berlusconi has more control over his country's television than any other European leader. His companies own the three largest commercial networks. Today's demonstration barely made the news on his channels. Eh, comuni diamo subito il benvenuto a Silvio Berlusconi. Presidente del Consiglio e leader del Popolo della Libertà. Molte grazie. The Premier always has access to the airways whenever he chooses. He is, however, very careful about who he gives interviews to, especially when scandal is in the air. Matrix is a current affairs program on one of Berlusconi's channels, presented by a good friend of mine, Alessio Vinci. Is it going amazing? Good to see you coming in. Coming in. Got some wine and cheese for you. I respect Alessio as a serious journalist. I wanted to know his perceptions of Berlusconi when they met and whether he regarded the leader as under siege. I've spoken to people who know him quite well, people who are at the top of the company that I work for, who often tell me he's alone. He's a man who sees that most of the people who surround him are people who need something from him. Uh, he feels that um, he has few friends, real friends, and he feels that out there there are people who want to see him out of a job, possibly behind bars. This is a guy who has survived incredible amount of scandals and accusations, and he's still there. If they were in another country, he would never have survived those scandals. And it's precisely because he's managed to survive them that there is a problem with Italy. That's the whole point. Well, why, why do you have to call it a problem? If you don't like him, if you don't like what he does, if you don't like what he says, vote him out. Vote him out. Uh, the big question is why Italians keep uh, electing him. Everything that for us, uh, as Italians, is a plus is seen abroad as being a negative, especially if you are someone who is a politician, who is a prime minister. You know, um, most Italians like to dodge taxes. I don't know if most Italians, many Italians like to dodge taxes. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're the prime minister, you dodge taxes. It is a bigger problem. The Italians, it's all, all, all in one. It's the same thing. They, they don't make this difference. Politicians are not necessarily held up to higher standards. So the conclusion is really that the conclusion is, my friend, Mark, Italians like him. They have the leader they like. It's as simple as that. Berlusconi currently enjoys nearly 50% approval ratings in the polls, far higher than many European leaders. He's so notorious that recently Italy's Rolling Stone magazine poked fun at his lifestyle by naming him Rockstar of the Year. But his supporters are more intent on casting him as a world statesman. All the chief of states all the chief of state, we met him, they are really surprised of his humanity, this way of, of dealing with people. And they call him, they love him. George Bush loved him. Also Obama, also Obama likes him a lot, likes, he called very often to him. He's seen as a man with weaknesses, 
but who has still been able to keep this country together in the last 15 years. Negli ultimi 15 anni. Berlusconi has come to represent stability for his voters. They love him for his energy as a man of action. Most of all, they see the billionaire businessman as having the Midas touch. Fatemi dare questo piccolo fatto d'orgoglio. Chi c'è in Italia che può paragonare quanto successi a qui presente signor Berlusconi? Ditelo. No? Italy's longest serving post-war leader began his career as a cruise ship crooner. His love of the limelight would never leave him. In his 20s, the son of a Milanese bank clerk, Berlusconi went searching for a backer to support his first property deal. Even then, he was supremely self-confident. He went to see an entrepreneur, and since he was only 24, he dressed in black and wore a hat to look older. I spoke to this entrepreneur, who is now elderly, and he told me he'd seen this boy under a black hat and thought he was either mad or he was on the ball, so he took the risk. As for me, I'm lucky enough not to have him as my rival, because he's someone who always finds solutions to problems. Always. He's a fantastic worker. He can work 18 hours a day. I never, I never uh, uh, heard uh, Berlusconi saying I am tired or, or I want to sleep. No, never. He started from nothing. He started after the university, little by little, stone by stone. He built his empire, an empire. Berlusconi has a gift for spotting what the public want and giving it to them. In the early 1980s, recognizing that most Italians were bored with state television, Berlusconi launched his own commercial channel. His brash mix of cheap American soaps and topless women shocked the Catholic nation, but the huge ratings proved Italians secretly loved it. Berlusconi started the TV, and the TV of Berlusconi had the, the ideology of vision, energy, and optimism. A great vision, a great energy, a great optimism. The property baron turned media mogul. Berlusconi nurtured high-level political contacts. By the mid-1980s, he had a virtual monopoly of Italy's commercial television. He bought the country's most famous football club, AC Milan, and expanded into newspapers, magazines, and banking. By the time he became Prime Minister, Berlusconi was Italy's richest man and its most powerful media baron. I've never seen such a sharp mind. He created television stations and became the largest commercial broadcaster. He got involved in football and won more than anyone. He went into politics and created the major party. Anyone could see this is a superior mind. But Italy's leader seems to have a weakness, an insatiable love of women. Even at the age of 73, it's still getting him into trouble. E allora confermo al di là di questo che nella mia vita io non ho mai neppure una volta dovuto dare dei soldi a qualcuno per una prestazione sessuale. E le dico anche perché. Perché da. Berlusconi is a charm of the old school and revels in his image as a playboy president. In May 2009, after 20 years of marriage, the second Mrs. Berlusconi, Veronica Lario, declared on the front pages of Italian newspapers that she'd had enough. But not before she'd confided her marital problems to close friend and biographer Maria Latella. 
fui colpita. I was struck by how tense she was. Dalla tensione emotiva che colsi in lei. E she told me she was thinking of splitting up. Separarmi. Era successo da pochi A few days earlier, the newspaper La Repubblica published the news that the Prime Minister had been at the birthday party of an 18-year-old girl, Noemi Letizia. The teenager admitted she had received several telephone calls from the Premier and that she affectionately calls him Papi. Berlusconi denied any impropriety, but while the Catholic Church voiced concern, the gossip columnist lapped it up. Posso dire che è stato un colpo anche per, per Veronica. It was obviously a shock for Veronica, the straw that broke the camel's back. Goccia classica che ha fatto traboccare il vaso. Mentre disse... Veronica added that he never came to the birthday parties of his own children. ...dei suoi figli, benché invitato. Mrs. Berlusconi filed for divorce, condemning her husband as sick and as someone who consorts with minors. Veronica Berlusconi abbia voluto. Veronica Berlusconi simply wanted to point out that she had long been worried by her husband's behavior. Occupavano da tempo. Such a scandal would have been enough to destroy many politicians, but this was just the beginning. A month later, Patrizia D'Addario, a professional escort, went to the papers with her own lurid tales of parties at Berlusconi's private palace in Rome. She said she'd been invited there by Giampaolo Tarantini, a businessman close to the Prime Minister. My first visit to Palazzo Grazioli was in October 2008. There was Giampaolo Tarantini, the pianist, the prime minister, and 20 girls. It was like a harem. I was quite surprised to find these girls were singing. They were singing Thank Goodness for Silvio and dancing along to it. I was one of the few who didn't know the song. He showed us films of some of his trips, like when he met Bush at the White House. And other meetings, like the G8. While he was showing us these videos, his little dog, that had been given to him by Bush's wife, called Fru Fru, came up to me and I stroked him. Berlusconi said, look how cute he is. He's very personable. He makes jokes. He sings. In fact, he sang that night. He dedicated several songs to me because he was sitting right in front of me. It appears Signor Berlusconi was much taken with Miss D'Addario. Soon she was invited back to his palazzo for a second evening. The second time was the evening Barack Obama was elected president. Tarantini told us that Berlusconi was busy with President Napolitano, but when we got to the Palazzo Grazioli, there he was. Well, I spent the whole night with the Prime Minister. He was very kind to me. He asked me whether I needed anything. I asked him, which bed do you want me to go to? Because there are different beds. I asked if I should go to Putin's bed. Yes, Putin had given him a bed, a nice big one with a canopy and curtains. During the night we talked, we joked, 
He even recited some poems. To me, he was such a sweet person. It's as if he's from a different planet. He's full of life. He's got more energy than a person of his age should have. He loves women. Next morning we said goodbye. He gave me a tortoise-shaped brooch as a present and he kissed me tenderly. The Italian papers had a field day, especially when it was leaked that Berlusconi's friend Giampaolo Tarantini was under investigation for supplying prostitutes. But most Italians simply shrugged their shoulders, making a clear distinction between Berlusconi the public leader and Berlusconi the ladies' man. Everybody in Italy loves beautiful women. This is the reason why Italians are not so impressed about what Berlusconi did with, with ladies in, in, in one night or in another night. And everybody was laughing, you know, about this. Okay, okay, great, Berlusconi has a good luck with these beautiful ladies, etc., etc. But no, no, no scandal. Silvio Berlusconi is not just a politician. Berlusconi is not just a politician, he's a rock star. In Italy, he's like the Beatles. Berlusconi's popularity hasn't suffered. It won't be affected by a divorce or any scandal. But at times, Berlusconi's personal tastes seem to have shaped his politics. In particular, his tendency to promote women with little experience into high political office. Mara Carfagna is Italy's Minister for Equal Opportunities. A former topless model, Berlusconi told her in public that if he wasn't married, he'd run away with her. Why should Berlusconi choose only among people that are, I would say, ugly? I would like very much to have a, a very nice colleague. If you, if you take each and every uh, member of Italian parliament, even uh, young women or girls, that uh, were running under Berlusconi's party, under my same party, you, 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 you cannot say that uh, even one of these young girls is doing a bad or a wrong action. In April 2009, Berlusconi's party put forward 30 Euro MP candidates, many of whom were young, female, and new to politics. They included a Miss Italy finalist, three models, and a Big Brother contestant. It later emerged that among those approached to stand for political office had been escort Patrizia D'Addario. Two or three months later, a friend of Berlusconi called. He promised to put me forward as a candidate for the European elections. I immediately gave him my CV. He said there was no time to waste. Even before Daddario's nomination became public, Berlusconi's wife had dismissed the stunt as shameless trash. Berlusconi had to back down. The models and showgirls stood aside for more experienced nominees. And the political debut of Italy's best-known escort was put on hold. Berlusconi plays up to his image as the great charmer, but to me he also represents something darker. Here, many call him furbo, cunning and crafty, someone who bends the rules. The most common description of him abroad is that he's a clown. In truth, for us in Italy, there is less and less to laugh about. In reality, Berlusconi is not a politician. He doesn't care about politics or the interests of Italian people. 
In a normal country, no one would believe that a character like him could lead one of the most important and well-regarded countries in the world. Some find Berlusconi unfit to lead Italy. But the truth is that when he entered politics, it took him no time at all to win over his people. Qui ho imparato da mio padre e dalla vita il mio mestiere di imprenditore. Qui ho anche appreso la passione per la libertà. When Berlusconi announced he was starting a new career in politics in 1994, he used his TV networks to sell himself as a champion of freedom, an Italy savior in an hour of need. The country was in turmoil. The old political system was seen as rotten to the core. The Mafia was exploiting the vacuum with a bombing campaign in major cities. Berlusconi stepped into the breach. His spell, his trick, was that he told Italians, I'm the new one. The politicians that brought you to this situation will be thrown into the sea. There is me now. I've done well in creating a television company, so I will be good in government too. Berlusconi's timing was impeccable. Italians wanted to change, and he was seen as a clear break with the past. Silvio! 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 In his first election campaign, he promised an end to crippling state bureaucracy and a million new jobs for Italy's working classes. Perché lo vota lei personalmente? Perché primo mi piace come 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 lui si si rapporta con noi, col popolo. Mm -hmm. Mi piace moltissimo. Lui è già amato tantissimo dal popolo, molto amato. Dal popolo, parlo dal popolo dal basso, dai lavoratori. Perché? Perché parla col linguaggio nostro. Lui si rivolge, lui dà le mani a tutti, lui parla con tutti, è una persona così. Dove il papà lo vogliono toccare tutti come se fosse il papa. First of all, he was uh, like uh, uh, a man uh, with entrepreneurial style, uh, speaking straight to the point, speaking directly to the people. He likes very much people-to-people -people contact. He, he likes very much to get closer to voters. Not only did Berlusconi have the common touch, he had his vast media machine to support him in a country where, even to this day, 75% get their news from television. The master of the photo call, he has always been obsessive about his appearance, impeccably groomed and perfectly tanned. L'Italia è il paese che amo. Qui ho le mie radici, le mie speranze e i miei orizzonti. Vi dico che dobbiamo costruire insieme un nuovo miracolo italiano. Freedom, prosperity, and less taxes. Berlusconi's miracle was simple and direct, just like the name of his first party, Forza Italia, Go Italy. He borrowed the slogan from the football terraces and made it his own, a rallying cry for the faithful. He urged Italians to unite against the old enemy, communism. He was able to convince the Italian people that five years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the number one problem in Italy was still communism. Only a media conjurer who knows the tricks of television and has the means could create such a spell. For many, it takes a lifetime. But for Silvio Berlusconi, it took less than three months from his entering politics to becoming prime minister. Italians believed that he could bring his business clout to government. But within months of being enthroned, Berlusconi's past caught up with him. Allegations surfaced that he'd made his fortune through dubious means and that he'd entered politics to avoid the law. He's terrified by the truth. He's haunted by unspeakable truths in his past. 
And those are his real nightmares. E che sono i suoi veri incubi. In questa situazione i magistrati della Repubblica di Milano hanno deciso di scrivere il mio nome nel registro degli indagati per il reato di corruzione e mi hanno inviato un avviso di garanzia. Io naturalmente non ho mai corrotto nessuno. He's falsified balance sheets, he's evaded taxes, he's made use of offshore companies and he's had shady dealings with characters linked to the underworld. Today Antonio Di Pietro heads an opposition party with less than 7% of the vote. His distrust of Berlusconi goes back many years. In 1993, Di Pietro needed armed guards to protect him in his work as a magistrate. He was a star prosecutor in a string of trials to rid politics of corporate corruption. The investigation summoned over 3,000 individuals to trial, among them Berlusconi. The accusation was that his companies had offered bribes to avoid taxes. Berlusconi himself was acquitted, but two of his managers were convicted. His balance sheet showed 2 plus 2 equaled 5 when earning money and 2 plus 2 equaled 3 when paying taxes. Berlusconi chose politics to solve his legal problems. Instead of becoming a fugitive from justice, he became a politician. Once elected, the government wasted no time in rushing through a law that weakened the power of magistrates and protected his financial interests. The main reason, which he confided to two great Italian journalists, Indro Montanelli and Enzo Biaggi in 1993, he said, and it was published, if I don't enter politics, I will have to declare myself bankrupt and they'll take me to prison. Fallisco per debiti e mi mettono in galera. But the allegations did not stop in 1994. Since being elected, Berlusconi says he's been interviewed by the police 587 times and summoned to court two and a half thousand times. Berlusconi not only protests his innocence on all charges. He also claims he's the victim of a conspiracy within the justice system. The left-wing magistrates are out to get him. In, in assoluto, il maggiore perseguitato dalla magistratura di tutte le epoche, di tutta la storia degli uomini in tutto il mondo. Few of the trials in which Berlusconi has been accused have been resolved. Many have been delayed and abandoned, and some he's been acquitted. The most consistent allegation against him is that, with the help of his political allies in the Senate, he's changed laws to suit himself and avoid conviction. His opponents accuse him of running the country like a personal fiefdom. Berlusconi. Berlusconi has in fact devised many laws to give himself immunity. We have identified at least 18, which he passed to serve either his legal interests or business interests. He's made 18 laws to meet his personal interests. Isn't this fascism? Isn't this dictatorship to try to bend the power of the law to meet his own interests? People should ask themselves, are we dealing with an innocent person or someone who doesn't want to be prosecuted? In 2003, Berlusconi was again accused of corruption. This time, he took center stage to answer the charges in person. La giustizia è uguale per tutti i cittadini, ma questo cittadino è forse un po' più uguale degli altri, visto che il 50% degli italiani gli ha conferito la responsabilità di governare il paese. 
It did little to dispel criticism that Berlusconi believes himself above the law. Accusations of financial misdeeds are one thing, but as I soon learned, there are even more serious allegations being made about Berlusconi's past. mafioso dice pace Einstein morto è morto è ah Cufu troppo sapeva there are many who claim that Berlusconi himself knows too much Throughout his political career, he's been dogged by the allegation that he's had links to the Sicilian Mafia, the Cosa Nostra. It's the charge that angers him the most. The Cosa Nostra does exist. It's a very dangerous organization, and it's shown this over the years. Its existence has now been proven in a series of trials around the world, and it doesn't just exist in Italy, but in other countries, including America. The Cosa Nostra is without doubt one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the world. Late last year in Turin, yet another court case brought Silvio Berlusconi to the world's attention. This time, the Prime Minister is not on trial himself. Instead, it is one of his closest friends. Today, amid tight security, a Mafia Pentito, or Supergrass, is giving evidence in Turin's Palace of Justice. In 2004, Marcello Dell'Utri was convicted of aiding and abetting the Mafia and sentenced to nine years in prison. Dell'Utri is a senator from Sicily and one of Berlusconi's most loyal political allies. Today's hearing is part of a long-running appeal process. During their investigation, prosecutors sought to question Berlusconi about his friend Dell'Utri, but he refused to answer their questions. Berlusconi si è avvalso della facoltà di non rispondere del mio processo. Certo che viene interpretato, ah, allora vuole nascondere cose. No, eh, non aveva nessun motivo di nascondere nulla. Come io credo, anzi, che Berlusconi un giorno tutte queste cose le chiarirà e le dirà pubblicamente. Dell'Utri, e cito quello che scrivono i giudici... I cite what the judges in Palermo said about Dell'Utri when the court sentenced him to nine years for aiding and abetting the mafia. Dell'Utri is the man who delivered Berlusconi into the hands of the mafia and during those years worked as an intermediary between the mafia and Berlusconi. Dell'Utri's appeal process has been going on for six years now. Today is the latest hearing. The man due to give evidence is Gaspar Espatuzza, a cold-blooded mafia hitman who murdered 40 people and helped dispose of a 12-year-old hostage by dissolving him in acid. There are no chances being taken with his security. He's the one in blue. Spatuzza took orders from the Graviano brothers, two of Cosa Nostra's most brutal bosses. In 1993, they launched a campaign of violence to assert control outside Sicily. They ordered Spatuzza to coordinate the killing of policemen in Rome. 
che il procuratore generale che ha chiesto l'esame può iniziare. Gabriano ci spiega che dobbiamo uccidere un bel po' di carabinieri. Questo attentato si deve fare sul territorio romano. Spatuzza è importante. Spatuzza è importante perché era il right hand man of the Graviano brothers. E quindi è un testimone. Spatuzza è un eyewitness to what Graviano said and thought while they were carrying out those massacres. Mentre facevano quelle stragi. Praticamente mi si spiega che per quanto riguarda l'attentato contro i carabinieri, di accentuare la, la, la portata, diciamo. Si, quindi si parla di potenziare l'attentato, stavamo usando una tecnica mai, così possiamo dire, mai che qualcosa del genere neanche i talebani fino adesso hanno fatto. Nobody is claiming that Berlusconi had anything to do with the crimes Patuzza is describing. But today the Italian press has gathered in numbers to hear if the hitman will make any allegations about the Prime Minister. They're not disappointed. Eravamo giunti al punto che a lei le danno le coordinate per incontrare Graviano Giuseppe a Roma al bar Tone. Prosegua, prego. Io so che questa sia è via Veneto, il bar si chiama eh, Tone, io non ero mai stato in sì. questo bar neanche in via Veneto. Quindi. Qui. Mi vengono fatti il nome di due soggetti, di Berlusconi, e qui venne a dire a Graviano se era quello del canale 5. Sì. Graviano mi disse che era quello del canale 5, aggiungendo che tra cui c'è di mezzo un nostro compaesano sì. dell'Udre. Sì. Grazie alla serietà di queste persone ci avevamo messo praticamente noi il paese nelle mani. Even the anti-Berlusconi papers concede the testimony of a mass murderer can't be taken at face value. Yet his every word is dissected. Berlusconi's supporters come out fighting, ridiculing Spatuzza's claims. A funny story of this uh, Spatuzza, this crazy man, this killer, this, uh, this murder, with, uh, we say that, uh, that, in, uh, that 15 years ago in, he knew from somebody that somebody was in touch with Ber this is the crazy story, really crazy. And the Italian, if you in the polls, every, all the Italians, 70% of Italians believe in Berlusconi and in what Berlusconi, in Berlusconi said and consider, con consider this story absolutely unbelievable. But this is not the first time Berlusconi has had to defend himself from accusations of mafia collusion. Several informers have alleged that the Cosa Nostra invested in Berlusconi's companies in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The Cosa Nostra was interested in developing business contacts who could offer a way of reinvesting their money through other entrepreneurs. Spatuzza tells us how in January 1994, the day before the announcement of Berlusconi entering politics, the Graviano brothers were overjoyed because they thought, with friends like that, we'll have Italy in our hands. Berlusconi has angrily denied such allegations, but one murky chapter in his past still haunts him. The starting point that is indisputable is that between 1974 and 1976, a guy from the Mafia called Vittorio Mangano lives in Berlusconi's house for two years. Well, at that time Berlusconi needed protection. Many wealthy people in Italy were being kidnapped, and he was afraid of this. But instead of turning to the police, they turned to the Mafia to get protection. Berlusconi claims that he simply employed Mangano to run his Milan estates. But many believe the convicted criminal was there to protect the business tycoon and his family. 
If true, it sent a message to the Cosa Nostra that Berlusconi had no scruples about dealing with them. Delutri helped the Cosa Nostra to place one of their men, a mafioso, a man of honor, inside Berlusconi's house. That was Vittorio Mangano. Delutri is someone close to Cosa Nostra. Mangano is someone inside Cosa Nostra. In Italy, it is a crime to associate with the Mafia in any way. Berlusconi and Delutri have said they did not know Mangano was a mafioso while in Berlusconi's employment. But since he was arrested while living at Berlusconi's home, many remain skeptical. He went to serve his sentences for earlier crimes committed in Sicily, and every time, after serving his sentence, Berlusconi takes him back inside his home twice. Obviously, he knew that Mangano was a criminal. I don't have any doubts that through Delutri, the Mafia had a 30-year association with Berlusconi's companies. The Mafia is not like a taxi where you jump in, pay for the trip and say goodbye to the taxi driver. Once you're on board, you can't get off. The allegations linking both Berlusconi and Delutri to the Mafia won't go away. It seems extraordinary to me that any serving prime minister, accused of even the slightest connection to organized crime, can continue to lead. But the more serious the accusations, the more passionate Berlusconi's defense. He boasts that his government has arrested 21 of the 30 most dangerous mafia leaders. Questo governo, più di tutti gli altri, sta conducendo una lotta senza quartiere alla mafia e alla criminalità organizzata. Abbiamo fatto più di qualunque altro governo nella storia del paese. E non facciamoci spaventare da coloro che non sanno altro che diffondere invidia, odio, menzione, calunnie. La verità e il bene vincono sempre. Siamo la gente della libertà, Presidente siamo con te, meno male che Silvio c'è. Viva l'Italia, l'Italia che ha scelto di credere ancora in questo sogno. E poi andiamo avanti. Ma ormai la sanno tutti, tutti, il suo popolo la sa a memoria. Ormai si canta anche sotto la doccia. Any suspicion of Berlusconi consorting with the criminal underworld is dismissed by his supporters. Certainly young party members can see no wrong with their leader. Quello che mi ha colpito stando qui è fino a che punto il paese è diviso. Cioè, o chi lo ama lo ama veramente, chi lo odia sembra che lo odi. Io sono di questa idea che più lo attaccano, più si rafforza. Sono 15 anni che gli italiani continuano a dar fiducia e sostenere Silvio Berlusconi con il loro voto democratico. I casi sono due. O tutti gli italiani sono degli sconsiderati e stupidi che non si rendono conto di chi stanno votando o per 15 anni hanno continuato a dar fiducia a Berlusconi. Berlusconi è un fenomeno nel senso proprio letterale della parola, nel senso che è un fenomeno non solo politico, ma è un fenomeno soprattutto sociale. È l'unico politico in Italia che riesce sempre, dovunque vada, a raccogliere delle adunate di folle oceaniche. Che la gente ha percepito, perché ciascuno di noi sulle proprie tasche ha percepito un vero e proprio miglioramento dello stile di vita e di conseguenza la gente continua a votarlo, continua a dimostrargli tutto l'affetto possibile. E lui è una persona che qualsiasi cosa ha toccato l'ha resa florida.
In the face of all the scandals and accusations, the blunders and suspicions, when cornered, Berlusconi always runs on the opposition. Così almeno tutti voi potete capire la differenza fondamentale che c'è tra noi e loro. Non avete dignità, non sapete cos'è la nobiltà d'animo, non sapete cos'è la democrazia, non sapete cos'è la libertà. It's easy for Berlusconi to land blows on an opposition which is divided and lacks credible leaders. There is no other politician who can begin to compete with his larger-than-life personality. It gives Berlusconi a clear advantage, especially when so many are prepared to forgive his flaws. And of Berlusconi, what does he think of Berlusconi? Ma a me, a me personalmente Berlusconi mi è simpatico. Mm-hmm. Senta, lei sa che chi lo critica uh, dice che, che è un fascista, che è un secondo Mussolini. Lei che ha 90 anni del fascismo. No, 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 per me non vissuto. è un fascista. No, no, no. Ma io, se vuole il mio parere, io ho vissuto il fascismo e, e stavo benissimo. No. Sono i Senta, queste storie di mafia che lo accusano di avere avuto i rapporti no, con la mafia. No, questo, no, questo dico proprio di no. Proprio di no. no non no, ci credete. No, proprio no, di no. Assolutamente no. No, no, assolutamente. No. Proprio Senta, male. E a lei questo, tutti questi scandali di donne, eccetera, hanno dato fastidio un po' a lei, personalmente. Ma, eh, intanto eh, bisogna tener conto che chi, chi non ha peccato scagli la prima pietra. Come lei, eh? Poi lo stimo perché le piacciono le donne, eh, che cosa vuol fare? Eh, perché lei, a lei non piacciono le donne, piacciono tutti. Ecco, sono Mario. Even at the age of 73, when many might be considering a graceful retirement, Berlusconi shows no signs of flagging. He loves to be among his people, pumping the flesh but it can backfire. In December 2009, when he was hit in the face, the nation was shocked. Remarkably, even when seriously injured, a resilient Berlusconi still paused to acknowledge the crowd and the cameras before being taken to hospital. Look, just so you know a bit about what he's like, the morning after the attack I went to visit him and he told me, now I won't be able to go among the people. And he suffers for this because he loves the contact with people. He loves them. That is Silvio Berlusconi. And what is the situation now? The situation is that almost seven Italians in ten are in favor of him. By February 2010, support for Berlusconi had slipped to nearly 50%, but that is still an impressive figure for a leader in his third term. With local elections approaching the spring, there is little sign of a collapse in support. Before leaving Italy, I sought an alternative view of the political scene from the country's best-loved satirist. BBC! BBC in my house, come on, come on, welcome, BBC, BBC, BBC. Beppe Grillo is a man who knows how to make you feel welcome. For 20 years he's been banned from Italian television for lampooning those in power. Thank you very much. It's telling that he's not been allowed back onto the networks, dominated by Berlusconi's allies. Instead he has a huge following on the internet, where he often vents his spleen. No, ti volevo, ti, ti volevo chiedere se hai dei, dei soprannomi uh, per lui e se, e se li puoi descrivere e spiegare perché. <laughs> Ma il sopra, soprannome è qualcosa. I don't che, see him as a prime minister. I see him as a psychodwarf, an iPod nano. Quindi lo vedo come uno psiconano, un iPod nano. Ashfeld hair because he has tarmac hair. Have you seen his hair? So I can't speak about him as if he was the prime minister. Non riesco a parlarne come se lui fosse il presidente del consiglio. 
It's like speaking about a corpse. That man doesn't have a soul. The soul that is needed to keep the body standing up is no longer there. There's only a corpse left. This is a marvelous country. It has genius people, but most of them have left Italy. We had the best engineers, the best car engineers, the best chemists, the best physicists in the world, the best schools in the world. There is nothing left. Nothing. Everything has been devastated. We need rationality, normality, common sense. We need people with new ideas, ideas that can be bought by 30 or 40 year olds, not 70 year olds. In five years' time, in five years, when we look at who governed Italy, we will say, how did we allow that? How was it possible to believe in people like them? Abbiamo psiconati ballerine, mignotte piduiste truffaldine, qui fuori legge fanno le leggi, come nel medioevo. I had asked for an interview with Berlusconi, but was denied. When I did get close to him, it was obviously not the right moment. His people don't like impromptu interviews, especially these days, and especially when they don't have control. As a journalist, I'm convinced the world would be a less interesting place without Silvio Berlusconi in politics. No other European leader provokes such adulation and outrage. He's hugely charismatic, but there's a dark side to Berlusconi, and far too many unanswered questions about his past. The Berlusconi phenomenon says as much about Italy as it does about the man. Only here could someone with his media power become prime minister. And only in Italy could a leader facing such serious allegations survive so long.